Welcome back everyone and welcome back to the series finale of Mamalotis. Today I'm joined by Kaigen, who has come all the way from England because he's fed up of the weather over there. And he's come to join me in the kitchen today. So welcome. Thank you very much. Now we've got some recipes planned for today, which I think is perfect for this kind of weather. Yeah. It's going to be some cosy weather, no? Se far tan poco cosy. I yeah. think so, yes. So I'm going to make a sopa de ajo to start off with. Yeah. That one is definitely one of my favourites. <laughs> and no, it's not just, not just garlic in the soup, so there's more things to it. You're going to make a... tell me. I'm going to make an accidental risotto, because it started off as soup, but I put in too much rice, so it ended up as risotto. So okay. that's what I'm making. <laughs> okay, I've never made a risotto, so that cool. one's quite interesting to learn. And to finish off, I'm going to make, a, I think it's a lot of people's favourite, which is chocolate lava cake. Mm -hmm. Which is really nice, it's sort of almost baked, but still, still syrupy in the yeah. middle. And I love Perfect chocolate. balance, no? Yeah, for big yeah. chocoholics, yeah. that is the one. Perfect. All right, so I think we should get started with the soup. Thank you. So first up, I'm going to cook up a deliciously simple garlic soup. Rich and warm, this is one to cuddle up with this autumn. Okay, so the soup. The first thing you have to do is start with the bread. Mm -hmm. Because the bread is going to give this soup a bit more texture, a bit more... You know, thickness to it. Yeah. So if you can start chopping that up. In the meantime, I'm going to heat up the pan with a bit of oil because the idea is to turn this mm. into like croutons. Can I use my hands? Or you can. You can perfect. use your hands. Yeah. Because we're going to fry this. We're going to yeah. go make it crisp, golden the outside, and then we'll set it aside. Mm -hmm. And we'll move on to the next step, which is going to be ham, because we're going to use serrano ham in this. Yeah. And garlic. A lot of garlic. Lovely. I'm a big fan of garlic. Do you Same. Like you like garlic? Garlic well, is right? a big. Uh, I think in every recipe that I make back at home. Yeah. There's garlic in it. I think a lot of Mediterranean recipes tend to use a to lot have, of... To have, yeah. yeah. This is going to make at least about four or five people worth. Perfect. I made it for a dinner party before, <laughs> and with the ingredients I had, we, we fed at least five people. So yeah, if you can please put the bread in here. Yeah. In the meantime, we can start slicing up some garlic. Mm -hmm. So, you know, start peeling them and everything. Yeah. On average, I say about six garlic cloves. Okay, look. But well, I've already got six here. you got six. Well, no, we'll do a bit more. Because... More, no. You know, I like garlic anyway, and this recipe was one which... I know it's sort of a bit of a heritage recipe, but the first time I had it, which is what it always brings back memories, yeah. is Sierra Nevada. Yes. Like after skiing all day, you know, you're really, really cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is really, this is a really warm up dish. Yeah. So it was the one which I, I, I've made after always, that, no? like yeah. quite often. So I mean, perfect for England, you know? Yeah, the yeah, perfect coming. for England, yeah. Winter's coming, so yeah, it's perfect for the winter. Though. So do you cook a lot at home in Donce? Quite a bit, yeah. The thing is that I make things in bulk, so like, I'll cook on like a Sunday and I'll make usually lunch and dinner. That lasts me for like until Friday or Saturday. I just go all over Rutos, I make like in big like chunks and it lasts to avoid, it just avoids like spending extra money or like it's time in the kitchen because usually you're so busy and everything is time in the UK that it just yeah. makes sense to cook in bulk, I think. No, it helps as well because there's a lot of commuting time. Yeah, lot, exactly. There which is. we're very lucky here that we don't have that. Exactly, yeah. Now coming here actually, um, <laughs> my bike, fui a and it didn't have any like batería. I'm like, oh. I can't come all the way here walking and I thought, actually this is jib, this is like everything's within walking distance, I can't walk. I thought we have that convenience. Exactly, yeah, but in the UK I'm so used to like thinking I have to leave it like an hour before to get in time to get the train, to get the tube, to get the bus. And it's like, oh. Well, the good thing about these recipes is that you can make them almost every day Yeah, yeah. And after work you can make all these recipes after yeah. work. Now, and they're quite easy, one of them, they seem simple enough. I tell so in the UK, for anyone after work they can make it. I know that you sort of work in the West End, so your hours yeah. are very... Yeah, well, Very, I, have, I have been working in the West End, but that's uh, over for now, so we'll see what the okay. next job is, but we'll see. Hopefully there is more West End, but it's a very like unstable career, because like, you don't know what's next. And usually it works by contract, so like I'm not sure exactly what's going to be next, but we'll figure that out. <laughs> because this is starting to smoke now, because it's crisping on the, on the outside yeah, yeah. and the edges. So we're almost, we'll leave this for a little bit longer. And then what I'll do is I'll set this aside. Mm -hmm. So Kagan, the bread's done. Yep. I'm just gonna pour this out. You can see that it's really smoky, yeah. but it's fine. It's crispy. It's gonna go all nice and crispy. We'll leave that to one side for now. Mm -hmm. I've poured some more oil in here. We'll just start frying the garlic and the ham together. So we can pour in the garlic now and the ham at the same time. Now I like to add both ingredients at the same time because it will prevent the garlic from completely burning. Yeah, yeah. 
Because the last thing you want to do is burn yep. the garlic. So we'll leave this there for a moment. Mm -hmm. This is just going to cook off a little bit. And then the final few steps are to add some fresh thyme mm -hmm. and some wine. You know the little small cartons of wine that you can buy? Yeah, yeah. Those, the best thing. Because they're already sort of measured out for you. Yeah. And a few sprigs of thyme. So you can grab those for me. I tend to just sort of pull them off the stem. So you get the leaves, but you don't, need, you don't get the... Right, yeah, the stem. The stems. In goes the wine now. Mm -hmm. And finally, because mm -hmm. it seems that we've added it to everything this season, is a bit of paprika. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet paprika is the last touch, and it also gives it a bit of colour, I mean. So, about a teaspoon or so, yep, in there. Now we'll leave this to stew, or to simmer and heat yeah. up. And then we'll add in, you, know, you can add water if you want, but yeah. it wasn't be really plain. So what yeah. I tend to do is just add vegetable stock. You can already buy it done, yeah, yeah. or you can make your own make with it, you know, yeah, the, with the little cubes. tablets, the cubes, or even if you really, really want to, Make your own stock with vegetables. <laughs> but that's, that's uh, a bit extreme, no? Exactly. That's all the, the process. You want the quick and the easy stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Kagan, you can see that this is now sort of bubbling and bleeding. Mm -hmm. We're going to add in the vegetable stock carefully because I always make a mess. There's about a litre of stock. Okay, yeah. We can always wait until the last bit to add any salt or any pepper yeah, yeah. to it because the ham, depending what kind of ham you buy, it tends to be quite salty. It's no, quite yeah. salty already, yeah. And now we add in the bread, which we sort of fried, fried a bit before. before yeah. And we'll leave that in there. So once we finish this off and this is sort of heating up already, mm -hmm. I'm going to pour them into little terracotta bowls, little cazuelas. Yeah. Crack an egg in it. That's okay. going to go in the oven until the egg is sort of baked, white. Perfect. Sounds very nice. Yeah. So we'll just leave this until that happens. Yeah. And I'll show you that bit. So this has been simmering away for like two or three minutes now. Yep. We're going to now pour this into little bowls. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try and get as much of everything as I can. So, the ham. That's a good, that's a good one. Yeah. Dolo. The bread goes soggy, but I kind of like it. See, you know? I like soggy bread, I'm not going to lie, I do. Sopone, that's what my mom says. Para se sopone. Sopone. No, no, I heard that one before. So yeah. you cook a lot with your mom then? Yeah, one well, no, the thing is that when I was younger, my parents used to own the Garcia's takeaway. So like, my granny used to work there and make all the homemade food. So at lunchtime, uh, during school, I would go and like watch her make all the food and help her when I could. So I'm quite used to being in like, a kitchen setting. That's which nice. is nice, yeah. So now we're gonna do is crack an egg in the middle. Okay. Cracking. And now carefully we've got to pass this into the oven. Mm -hmm. I've turned this on at least 160. Yeah. And this doesn't just sit there until the egg cooks. So it shouldn't take very long. Okay, what do you think? I think we should try them. Yeah. No? I think they look they look exactly really good, how I wanted them, so yeah. it's a bit sort of crisp on the top. Mm -hmm. Right, let's do this then. Let's go. Get a bit of egg as well. Mm -hmm. mm, very good. It's really rich. Yeah, it is. I love it because I find it really, really sort of cozy. Now when it's cuddled up on the sofa. Yeah, with, that, with a bit of a manta and a bit of a little nice fit. Yeah, that's I good. Said. Yeah. It's and you can have good. it in a mug as well. And then you can like sip it, it's quite nice like that as well. Definitely, sit down with a big yeah. mug and a big movie. Yeah, it's good. All right. Well, we're going to finish this off mm -hmm. and then you're going to take over and cook some really heartwarming risotto for me. Yep, indeed. Good, let's do this then. Let's go. Go. It's Kagan's time to shine as he shows us how to prepare his show-stopping risotto. Kagan, it's your turn now. My turn indeed, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, you have to tell me where to start and I'll give you a hand. Perfect. Shall I give you some backstory about what we're doing first though? Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, so, in my second year of university, I found this recipe online, which was, um, it was like a soup with broccoli and it was quite cheesy and with chicken. It looked quite, like homey, like kind of similar to the soup that you made. Yeah. Um, but it said, add rice, add a mug, a cup of rice. And I was a bit bruto and added a whole <laughs> cup of rice. So when it like boiled, it turned into a risotto. So I kind of left it as a risotto instead of a soup. What a nice um, mistake, no? It was a nice mistake, yeah. So it's quite, it's become like a favorite dish of mine now because it's like, I can make risotto. And I have improved it since like, since my second university, I've like added different things to it to make it a bit better. So we start with chopping off like four garlics, more or less. Okay. I think. Do you want to chop two of them and I'll chop them? Yeah, two? sure. And like before where you um, cut them into like slices for your soup, yeah. I usually just finely chop them into like small pieces. So really? Okay. Yeah. So little, little tiny pieces? Yeah, yeah. So do you cook much at home? Because you said you sort of grew up 
learning from your granny, got your yeah. lunch times. So yeah, I've always kind of enjoyed the kitchen in some sense. I don't enjoy the washing up, but I do enjoy the cooking no side of it. Some people do though. So I've always kind of been brought up with it. My dad's always been a bit of a good cook as well. He makes some um, really good pata cordero and stuff, and really like Moroccan inspired dishes. So it's just kind of been with me since I was young. Like I feel quite confident in a kitchen. So it's good, it's fun. Do you host quite a lot of dinner parties in France or it's more dinner for No, one? it's more like dinner for me. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes like just before coming over to back to Gibraltar, on the Sunday we made um, a roast and we usually make it like a buffet. So like we set all the stuff from the kitchen, we just serve ourselves and we make like big roasts. So the good thing about coming back to Jib now for your holidays is that you get spoiled. Uh, yeah. You don't have to do anything. <laughs> yeah, that's a bit, when I offer to help, obviously, like I always say, do you want this washed up or do you need any help in the kitchen? But like, no, you, you, you chill out, you, <laughs> you sit back, you're on holiday. I'm like, okay then, I'm on holiday. That's it. Okay, yeah, that's more or less. Yeah? Stops. Okay, I've done my garlic bits as well. Yeah, so if we just fry this in the pot with some olive oil, so we can just throw in the garlic now. Perfect. And we can add in the onion as well. Which we chopped, there's a whole onion. It's a whole onion that we chopped, so we can just throw that in as well. We want those to be sort of small pieces yeah. as well. So the idea of a risotto is really to have small... Small, yeah, so everything is quite small, yeah. but usually I have made it with broccoli before okay. as well, and they stay in chunks. So it's kind of like it contrasts the little pieces of like garlic and onion with the big chunks of broccoli. Uh, and then we can just dice the chicken and then add that in as well. So usually it's like just like cubes, more or less. So we spoke briefly about you being in the West End yeah. over there before. So what is it that you sort of do in the UK? So, well, trying to do. Um, I studied acting at Arts Ed a year long. It was an MA, but before that I did uh, drama and theatre arts at St. Mary's University. And then I took a gap year. So really it's just trying to find acting work, which is not the easiest job to find. But you manage. So like you said before, I uh, just finished a contract with Evita on the West End. And that was really fun. So now when I go back, it's just seeing what my agent can offer me or what work I can find or making your own work. So it's just getting out there and putting yourself. It's got a lot of competition, no? Yeah, it's competition and it's, <coughs> a lot of it is based on how you look and it's just knowing what your casting is. So there's a lot of factors to consider really, but it's what I enjoy the most and it's what I want to do. So that's, good. that's why I'm there. Well, I've always luck. said that if I could do what I could do there, here, then obviously I'd move here, but because there aren't that many opportunities here, everything is quite amateur dramatics, then I'd rather just stay in the UK. And now we can just add in the chicken. And then what I usually do is add in some sm smoked paprika. This is beam and don't lose about it. Really yeah. the difference. So be the same. just sprinkle it on top. A bit sweeter. Yeah, just a bit sweeter. And that should be fine, more or less. And then just stir it in. Just yeah? stir it in, yeah. And at the same time, then we can add in the bacon, I suppose. Because I've never done it with the bacon before, so this is all new. Ah, I'm okay. just experimenting at the same time. Um, <laughs> we'll pretend like you've done this all the time. No. We only, yeah, we'll, we'll pretend. <laughs> So yeah, whilst that's cooking, whilst the chicken is finishing, we usually I prepare some stock cube, but we'll just add in some water with a stock cube and then that should be fine once the chicken is cooked. Once it's white, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So we just leave this to stew for a little bit. Yep. We'll come back and check on it once the chicken is yep. soft cooked and carry on with this. Join us in part two when Kagan puts his finishing touches on his rich risotto. Welcome back. Let's check on how Kagan's risotto is coming along. So yeah. now we can add in the water. So you're adding the water first and then the stock? Cube. Yeah. Usually I would have mixed it together, but it doesn't really matter to be fair. So now we can just like crumble the stock cube into the whole pot. And just sort of stir it in. Just stir it together, yeah. So yeah. this accident, you said that you live in, in England. In England, yeah. In Kingston, yeah. Was just, you're working and, and everything. Do you live with Janitas as well? Yeah, I live with two other Janitas yeah. uh, and we have too much fun perhaps. Um, it's nice because like, we're all the same age so, and we've all known each other from before so it's a really nice living environment. So you mentioned before that you live with Rachel as well. That was with on the Rachel show. who was on the show before, yeah. Yeah, she's fun. So you both <laughs> tend to have like this accidental thing going on. She made her accidental dessert. I realised, yeah, after I decided to make it. So like, there's a theme going on that we're both making accidental dishes but that's fine because uh, obviously she <laughs> made a dessert, and, a dessert and I made uh, a main dish so it's fine. Yeah, we can add in the rice now if you want to, then okay. we can just leave that to simmer. So this is 250 grams? 250 grams of risotto rice, yeah. yeah. Once we've just added that, we can just give it a little bit of a stir. Okay. And then we can add on the, the lid. 
So this is just going to sit there. Yeah, just leave it to simmer and usually check on it sometimes to see if how the water is doing, if the rice has soaked it up and just add a bit more if we need to. And then at the end, just add the cheese and make it into like a little bit of a sauce. So sticky. How long are we leaving this there? Do you think? Uh, yes. Roughly 20 minutes, I'd say. Okay, so we'll check back on it in 20 yeah. minutes. Look at it in between. Yeah. Okay. Now that that's been simmering for a while and the rice is kind of cooked. You can see um, that it's thickened up It's already. thickened, yeah. yeah. And it's going to thicken even more when you add in the cheese. I usually add a bit of Salt. I know that the bacon's quite salty anyway, but just to give it a bit of an extra pizzazz, <laughs> add a bit of salt and a bit of um, pepper as well if you want to crack this one. Yeah. Yeah. And then we can just taste it and see how it is. Just give it a stir, and then we can add in the cheese as well. So the cheese is really going to make this really creamy. Creamy, yeah, and quite sticky, which is why I've always I prepared a bit of water on the side just in case it gets too thick and sticky, just to like soften it up a bit more. But at this point, do we lower the temperature down a bit? Or yeah, do lower it down a bit and just stir it in so that it melts. So it's quite a stodgy dish. So it's yeah, nice and... I've always compared it. Doesn't, the, the sound doesn't sound quite appealing, but I've always compared it to like a lunch lady's dish when you just can picture like slopping onto yeah. a plate. <laughs> but it tastes nice, so that's the most important part, yeah. I think that's quite cheesy and stringy. That is really cheesy. And we used mature cheddar. Yeah, mature cheddar. About well, obviously, you can use whichever cheese you prefer. To yeah. have because some people prefer mild cheddar. I think uh, this is uh, pretty much done. And it the smells cheese, fantastic. Yeah, it smells quite nice. It smells quite cheesy. So that means that it's good. <laughs> Always. And that's a cheese winning. Yeah, exactly. So we can serve this now into a little bowl. Just make sure you get a nice serving of chicken and bacon as well. So you want to get all the ingredients yeah. that you're good in there. All right, let's give this a go. Yep. Mm. Creamy. Good, not bad. Not bad. Yep. I was saying that's really, really nice. Really Thank creamy, you. simple to make. Simple and it's easy to then clean because you only use one pot, so it's just not much to then clean up after, which, which is wise. Even better. Yeah. So, so da, want another bite? Yeah, I get it. So I think Peace. we can now start with the dessert. Mm hmm. Because I am a bit of a chocoholic. Yes, yeah, so am I. And I am going to be really excited for this bit. Perfect. So. We can finish this off, stop the dessert, mm -hmm. and have that sweet ending. All right. To finish up, I'm going to dish up some naughty little chocolate lava cakes. Perfect for all you chocoholics out there. So, dessert time. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to make chocolate lava cake. The best kind of cake is the best yeah. because I'm a big chocoholic fan. Yeah, so am I. So I think we should get definitely just jump in there. Yeah, let's jump. So to start, this is only going to take a few ingredients mm -hmm. and a few little steps. It's melting the butter and the chocolate first. Okay. So in a bagno maria style, so put some water in the bottom of a yeah. pot, we're going to melt the butter. So we're just going to wait for this to sort of liquidize. Nice, yeah. yeah. So once this is melted, we're adding the chocolate. Yeah. Now this is really easy because we'll leave this to cool. And the base of this dish is going to be like a mousse, mm -hmm. which is just beat the eggs with the sugar until it's really nice and fluffy, fluffy and creamy. Yeah. And then we'll add in a little bit of flour, okay. which is what's going to cake this. But I've got an extra little twist that I add to it, which is my own touch. Because okay. I'm a really big fan of chocolate and orange, mm. especially dark chocolate with orange. With orange, yeah. We'll add in the chocolate now, because that's almost done. Yeah. And we'll just have to wait for this to melt. Yeah. So are you like a sweet maker or a baker? Or? More, I tend to make like dishes, like blato, <laughs> casero, like that's me. Like for a while I was, I was quite keen on making apple crumbles, but I got quite bored of that. So I stuck to like main dishes really. Yeah. But I don't really make many cakes. I leave that to Rachel. Rachel makes the cakes. The sweet stuff, no? Yeah. One of your housemates makes the starter. Yeah. You can make the main course. We take it in turns. So it is. Yeah. So the chocolate is completely melted. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put this to one side. And then we can start with the rest with of the, the rest, yeah. dessert. So this needs to get off the heat. I'm going to sit it there mm -hmm. so that it cools off. So into the mixer, mm -hmm. we need to add the eggs. So it's three eggs. Yeah. Do they go so, in first? Yeah. So you okay. can crack that in for me. And the sugar. Okay, look. And what we're going to do is just mix these together. Yeah. So you can, you can put the eggs in first. So now we'll beat these eggs mm -hmm. with a whisk together. Once you have a really moussey mixture, mm -hmm. which is basically full of air, you'll see all the bubbles. Yeah. You have to wait for this to cool down. To cool Otherwise, down. Yeah, 
You can end up with cooked egg in this. You don't want that. No. Uh -uh. no definitely don't want that. No. Okay. So you can see that once you've added the chocolate, it starts to thicken, thicken up, up already. Yeah. So before I add in the flour, I'm going to grate in a bit of orange mm -hmm. zest because that's the bit which yeah. I think that's your favorite part. That, no? Yeah, that's my favorite yeah. part. It's going to finish it off. It's like Jaffa cakes, but better, no? Yes. Yeah. You know it. I'm on it. So once we've added the zest, mm -hmm. I'm going to turn this on and you can slowly pour slowly in the flour. Yeah. Perfectos. Everything is blended and yep. mixed as best as we can. Mm -hmm. You can even see some of the, um, the orange orange peel in there. Yeah. But you can smell it already. And it's really fragrant. Yep, yep, yep. So at this point... Are we not just dipping in? Not yet. Okay. Control okay. your urges. I'm trying. At this point, we now have to pour this into the ramekins. Uh -huh. So I put four. Now, I, like I said before, I did it in a big, in a, large yeah. pot and it worked just as fine. So let's just pour it. So everything's poured in there. Yep. And now the last final touch, because it's not got enough chocolate already, <laughs> is to add in yes. a bit of the trunk in there. So you can do two and I can do two. Perfect. You would just split them in half, no? Yeah, more or less. And I just put them in the middle. And that one can be for you to enjoy, Dara. Thank you very much. Squeeze it down in there. And then this is going to go in the oven at 180 degrees, 20 minutes. Okay. See, no, eat all the chocolate, it's fine. <laughs> 20 minutes in there. So these are done. And they look great. Thank you. Ideally, they should be still molten in the middle. So you get molten lava. So Either you way. should just dive in there. You, yeah. just, you just can't wait. Um, yeah, I can't. So let's go for it. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, I know. Mm -hmm. There's a really subtle taste of the orange. Yeah. Which is great. It's good. The orange is quite powerful. Mm -hmm. It gives it a really nice fragrance. Yeah. The dark chocolate, which is really rich. Yeah. And it's but it doesn't overpower it, which no. is nice. I'm going to just leave you with this mm -hmm. in the room. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Walk away. I know. <laughs> Okay, so thank you very, very much for being on the show with me. Anytime, it's been a I've, pleasure. I really, really enjoyed that risotto. Thank you. So I hope everyone at home has enjoyed everything. And we've had a great, great season this year. We've had lots of different recipes. So if you want to carry on making things, I hope you enjoy it. If you want to make new things from my book, go and get it. It's out in the shops. Keep tweeting me, Instagram me, Facebook me. We're on YouTube. All the episodes you can catch up online. And I'll see you on screens very, very soon. If you want to catch up with all the recipes and ingredients for today's dishes, head over to mamalotis.com.